Hi, my name is Shu Washido from Linux Nikon. Welcome to Shop Talk. In the previous episode, we talked about the benefits of a presetter. In this episode, our resident engineer, Eric Hartman, will show us how those benefits apply in the shop. We are in our shop in front of the Haas and Hawthor 6A presetter, which Eric here will be using to see how efficient it is compared to the traditional tool setup methods. Eric? Thanks, Shuya. So I have five tools set up here, ready to go into the machine. Um, I'm gonna measure these using the presetter, and then I'm gonna use a more traditional method, and we'll compare the two for efficiency. Okay, so I've got my five tools set up, ready to get measured. I'm gonna use the presetter to capture their length offsets use a post processor to upload those length offsets to the machine and we'll be ready to go. Let's get started. thumb drive and my tools, bring them over to the machine, upload my offsets first. Okay, so now that we've measured our tools using the presetter, I'm gonna use a more classic method of using a Nikon HP6 here. So what I'm gonna do is attach this to the top of my part and touch off all my tools until I get to zero on my dial here, and I'll know I'm exactly six inches above the top of my part. 
Then I can capture my offset number, subtract six inches, and I'm ready to go. All right, let's get started and measure these tools. All right, now that we've already done the presetter and our HP6, I'm gonna do the more modern method using a in-machine tool probe like we have here. Um, let's get started.
the first four tools we're going to be able to do sequentially. The fifth tool, being a shell mill, doesn't have a cutting edge at the center line of the spindle, so I'm going to have to manually handle jog that one over to the tool probe and touch it off that way. Now all of our tools are measured, and this seems like a pretty good way to measure tools. It's easy on the operator, it's really difficult for them to make a mistake, but it still takes a lot of spindle time that we could eliminate by using a presetter. Now let's talk numbers. This is a chart breaking down the cost of presetting tools based on the methods we have discussed in this video. For those people who want to take a closer look at this chart, Please pause this video now. I would like to focus on three specific columns, B, D, and F. Column B is a breakdown of each time each method takes per tool. Column D is how much it costs to do tool setting offline. Note that the presetter is the only method on here that can be done without a machine, which means less downtime. Column F is how much you charge as your CNC machine rate. For the presetter, this value is zero because the presetter does not require a CNC machine for tool setting. That concludes all the demos. Eric, thank you so much for doing them. Of course. What conclusions can we draw from the demonstrations you did today? So the main point I want to point out is that even though it may have taken a little bit more time to measure our tools and load them into the machine with the presetter, the actual time spent at the machine was maybe 40 seconds. And that was just the time to load the tools into the machine and run our offset program. When we're using a traditional method like an HP6, it's all time spent at the machine. That was maybe four and a half minutes. That's all time that could be better spent cutting parts. And the faster that we cut more parts, 
the faster something like a presetter can pay itself off. All right. Eric, thank you so much for being on this video. Of course. That concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Shuya Washido. This was Shop Talk. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.